everyone. Welcome to this video about how to simplify an exponent of zero. So before we get started, I want you to actually take a moment to give yourself a little bit of love. Um, a lot of times we're really hard on ourselves and by just taking a moment to give yourself some kindness, it can really make a big difference in your day and it will also help you learn math more because when you're feeling happy, it's easier to learn. So take a couple deep breaths, give yourself a little bit of love, and let's make this math easy. An exponent of zero is actually one of the easiest exponents to simplify because any number raised to a zero exponent just equals one. So if you have six to the zero power, that's gonna equal one. If you have a ginormous number like 1,520, that's just gonna equal one. If you have a fraction raised to the zero power equals one. If you have a negative number raised to a zero power equals one. Or just ordinary whole numbers like the number two raised to a zero power is always gonna equal one. Um, the only thing you have to watch out for is paying attention to what the zero power is applying to. So in a problem like this, if you have negative four raised to the zero power, the zero actually only applies to the four because the negative sign was not included in parentheses like it was up here. So in this problem, you would say four to the zero power equals one, and then when you apply the negative sign to it, the answer would be negative one. Similarly, if you have three to the zero power over four, the zero power is only applying to the three, so the simplified answer would be one fourth because three to the zero power is one, but four doesn't have any exponent, so it just stays as four. Zero to the zero power usually we say equals one. However, there are some arguments that say that it may equal something else, and I'll explain that later in this video. But first I wanna look at why does anything to the zero power equal one? Like where did the one come from? And the answer to that comes from a pattern that you can see if you list out all of the powers of any number. I chose the numbers three and five, but you could choose any number and the pattern would still be consistent. And if you list out the exponents in decreasing order, so I listed it out, you know, five, four, three, two, one, et cetera, and you simplify out those powers, you'll notice that there's a consistent pattern in the answers. If you do 243 and you divide it by three, the result is 81. And that makes sense because three to the fifth power is three times itself five times, whereas three to the fourth power is only multiplied four times. So it makes sense that dividing by three would give you the next number, and this pattern holds consistent as you go th down throughout all of the numbers. Any number divided by three is going to equal the next number down. And if you take the number three, which is three to the first power, and you divide that by three, you're gonna get the answer one. And that's the reason that three to the zero power equals one. And this pattern will hold true regardless of what number you chose. So like if I chose to look at the powers of five, this is also going to have a consistent pattern where you're dividing by five every time to get the next number. And if you do five to the first power, which equals five, and you divide that by five, that's going to give you one. And this pattern will work for any number you choose, even if you chose like a million two hundred and seventy. That would be a really big number to find all the powers of, but it would still be true that it's going to consistently divide by itself and when you divide that number to the first power by itself, you're gonna get the answer one. Another reason that the um, any number raised to the zero power equals one is because of the quotient rule of exponents. So the quotient rule of exponents says that if you have two powers with the same base divided by each other, you can subtract the exponents to simplify it. So for example, if I had x to the seventh over x squared, I could do seven minus two and get x to the fifth. 
And the reason that this works is because x to the seventh means that I'm multiplying x by itself seven times and then dividing it by x times itself twice. And if you notice, um, when you have a number divided by itself, you can cancel it out because any number divided by itself just equals one. So two of the x's get canceled out, leaving me with five x's, which is x to the fifth. So the quotient rule of exponents is just a shortcut to help you be able to do that without extending everything out. If you do the same thing with x to the eighth divided by x to the eighth, the quotient rule of exponents says that it should equal x to the zero because anything um, minus itself just equals zero. So eight minus eight equals zero. If you expand it out, you're gonna have eight x's on the top, which might take me a minute to write. <laughs> And then you have eight X's on the bottom as well. And when you cancel all of those out, every single one of those divided by themselves is going to equal one. And so you're gonna get one times one times one times one times one, eight times, which just equals one. And that's another reason that X to the zero equals one. At the beginning of the video, I told you that the only number that has a little bit of controversy around it is zero to the zero power. And the reason for that is because if you list out all the powers of zero, it does not follow the same pattern as all of the other numbers because zero to the fifth power equals zero and basically zero to any power will equal zero. And so there's some arguments that zero to the zero power might equal zero instead of equaling one which kind of makes sense. However, if you do the quotient rule of exponents explanation, you get that um, x to the zero power equals zero divided by zero, which is an undefined number. And so zero to the zero is controversial because on one side, if you follow the rule of any number to the zero power equals one, you could say it equals one. But if you look at this pattern, you might say it equals zero, and if you look at this, you might say it's undefined. And so there actually is no um, general consensus on what zero to the zero power equals. But in algebra, we usually just say that it equals one so that it stays consistent with all of the other um, powers of zero. So to summarize, to simplify an exponent of zero, basically any number raised to a zero power will equal one. You just have to pay attention to what the zero power is applying to, um, like we looked at in these negative number examples and the fraction examples. Um, and zero to the zero power, we don't really know what it equals. But that's the summary. And if you want to write a formula down in your notes, um, a good formula for the exponent of zero would be that any number to the zero power equals one, which you could write as x to the zero power equals one. And that's how you simplify an exponent of zero. I hope this video was helpful for you. Please comment below to let me know how easy this was for you and then subscribe. For more help with exponents, check out my exponents playlist here on YouTube or go to mathtutoringonline.com to get additional help by asking a question or booking a one-on-one -on -one tutoring session. See you soon!